God be the glory for all the many things he has done. And we all can say hallelujah. Praise God for another day's journey. Thank you uh, for joining us tonight to our officers, and to, our, to our ministers, and to our mothers, and to you, my father's children. Welcome, one and all, to another Bible study as we continue our journey in the life of Abraham walking through the book of Genesis. Tonight's uh, lesson uh, begins at Genesis 19. And we pick up at verse number 12. Uh, it is our prayer tonight. We want to go all the way through to, to, to verse 27. You can try to hump that off tonight. Uh, but the title tonight is Get Out. Get Out. I, I know we saw that movie that was uh, entitled Get Out. Spoke about a gentleman who was uh, uh, trying to be transformed into another being. Uh, somebody who had already gotten messed up uh, had asked him, yes, had asked him to, to get out while he could, to hurry up and get out because you're in danger. So as we get ready for this lesson, I want you to call your family. Welcome on Facebook, conference call. Uh, call all those that, that want to be a part of a great lesson tonight. While you're doing that, we're going to open with a prayer. We pray that uh, others will come on and, and be blessed by the lesson on tonight. Our Father, now God, we thank you for another day's journey. Thank you for, for sparing our lives, for watching over us all day long. Then God, you brought us to this present hour. We just stopped by to tell you thank you. Have your way tonight as we open your word. Speak to us and speak through us. Use us as an instrument of honor. We'll give your name, glory and honor. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Now, <clears throat> verse 12. Verse 12. 12 through 14. And, and, and it reads, And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides a son-in-law and thy sons, thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spoke unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Look, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. I title this first segment, Admonished. Lot was admonished to get out of the city, and he hesitated. Lot then went and told his sons-in-laws, get out of the city, and they refused. They made mockery. They thought uh, Lot, their father-in-law, sound mighty foolish. When we look at this lesson, you have to look at it from the perspective of what are you getting out of? Yes, Lot was getting out of Sodom and Gomorrah and the destruction that was on its way. But for you and I, we have to get out of sin. Sin is our great uh, a problem that, that each of us has. Sin is, is our uh, destroying power that destroys unbelievers' souls, and it destroys believers' relationship with God. 
And so the, the message tonight is to encourage all of us, get out of sin. Get out, get out, get out. It will consume you. You will be consumed by it. And it's time now to get out. God has saw enough. God has, 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 has allowed time to go by that somebody might repent. But needless to say, no one repented. No one. No, no, no one repented. No one, no one wanted to get saved but Lot and his wife and his two daughters. So the angels admonished them. I am admonishing you today as the servant of the Most High God. Whatever it is that's unholy, whatever it is that's unchristlike, whatever it is that's, that, that, that's defacing you, defaming you, that's destroying you, I'm asking you to get out of it right now. Get out. Get it. Get out. I'm admonishing you. I'm encouraging you. And I'm telling you, it's time to get in a hurry. This, this COVID should have, should have admonished all of us to make sure that our lives were ready to leave here at all times. We, we should have been encouraged. Um, now, I don't want to say fearful, but we should have been encouraged that any day could be our last day, and it could be anyway, but COVID should have made that much more apparent. You, we should have saw the weakness that all of us really were in. We're, we're not that strong. We're, 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 we are no more than one step, one breath away from dying. So I'm just encouraging you, admonishing you, get out the Lord, because the Lord sent them to destroy the city. They, they weren't going on their own. God sends people your way to just make sure you would just wake up. If you would just, if you would just wake up. Amen? Look at, look at uh, uh, how he uh, moves from verse, uh, when he was in the house, the angel spoke to him. He had to go out of the house to speak to his sons-in-laws, and that's when they made the funny, the fun of him. They they laughed at him. They didn't take it serious. A whole lot of people not taking me serious. Your life is no more than a breath away. I, one writer said, "Our life is no more than a vapor. At any moment, we all are sick enough. We have something floating in our bloodstream. Something outside of us can take our lives." And so I'm just admonishing you. I'm encouraging you. Get in a hurry for the Lord. Verse 15, 16 and 17. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Isn't that something? I call this advice. That, that, this, this section is called the advice. Amen. If you can put your, put your, put your uh, phone or your Zoom on, on, uh, on silent, please. On mute, please. Amen. And so, advice. The angel had to hasten Lot. He had to hurry Lot. He had to make Lot get in a hurry. Amen. 
He says, I don't need you lingering. I'm advising you to get out of town, and then I need you to do two things. Don't look behind you longingly and escape to the mountain. That there is no escape but to the mountain. There is no path forward if you keep looking back. So I'm, I'm advising you for your own safety, for your own benefit, for your own well-being. Don't look behind you. Whatever's going to happen in the past, whatever's going to happen in the rears, let it happen. But you remain focused on forward. And I, I'm, I'm just here to help somebody today. Stop living in the past. Stop letting your life be directed by the things of yesterday, yesteryear, of what you thought, how you thought, the way you devised your life, the way you thought things would be. No, go forward with God leading and guiding you every step of the way. Uh, amen. Nothing behind you is worth anything. Only thing what you have is before you. Amen. Each on your own Zoom, can you please silence or mute your device, please? Amen. He said, I need you to don't look behind, but also escape to the mountain. That's a key uh, uh, element that that we are we, we going to get into later on. I don't need you to escape in the village. I don't need you to escape in the plain. I don't need you to escape on the water. The place to go is on the mountain. The, the only escape is on the mountain. The mountain. The mountain. Amen? Verse number 18, 19, and 20. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, my, thy, thy, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight. Now thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. Amen. I call this one the argument. Lot was instructed to escape to the mountain. Lot made an argument since I've been uh, shown extended mercy since I've been extended grace since you've been showing me favor I don't want to go to the mountain I want you to make room for me to escape into Zoar and I, and I don't want you to, to destroy Zoar I, I, I want you to at least let me go there and spare the city and that, that, that's making a that's, a, that's, that's how it is when we try to make a compromise with God. We argue with God and try to tell God what we want to do and what we think is best for us to do. And what's shocking, sometimes God says, well, go ahead. God allows us instead of us following him. And then we get angry because he, made, he, he allowed us to walk into a path that's not going to be beneficial to us. Well, we need to learn to follow God every step of the way and stop making arguments, stop making compromises, stop trying to tell God what you think is best for you. And then the funny part is, he said it's a little city. In other words, you're going to destroy it and all these other cities, but since Zoar is so small, why not spare it because I will be there, and if I'm there, I will be able to convert them. But listen, that's how we try to deal with sin. It's just a little sin. It's just a little bitty sin. If it's just a little sin, 
is something that should not cause me no problem. But I'm here to tell you, any sin is too big with the Lord. Every sin is too large for the Lord. Your, 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 your path forward, you ought not want to engage in little sins. You got to learn how to deny yourself and then resist the devil and he will flee. But he said, it's just a little city. It's just a small place. It's somewhere that you're going to destroy. But if I'm there, you can spare it. Look at, uh, look at now, look at the uh, 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 chapter, verse 21 and 22. And he said unto him, see, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither. For I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. That's the arrangement. God made, the angels made an arrangement with Lot in an effort that they would appease him. He don't understand that this arrangement with God is a compromise that's going to wind up getting him in complications later on. Later on, uh, in a few more verses, you're going to find that his wife becomes a pillar of salt. We can call that because of the compromise. After that, his two daughters become pregnant by him. Maybe he should have went to the mountain and he would have possibly missed this foolishness. But instead of going where God said go, he wound up in trouble. He made an arrangement. Yeah, God will let you do, go do what you want to do. God ain't, don't have you to be a robot. God ain't going to hold you back. God ain't going to restrain you. God ain't going to refrain you. You must yourself. You have to resist the devil. You Listen, God gives you a door of escape, but he don't push you through the door. He don't even put you on an escalator to slide through the door. You must walk through the escape. You've got to be able to put in your part. God makes ways for you, but God is not going to make you do anything. No, 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 no. If you want blessings, you will follow the path. If you just want to go through life and stumble, God will allow you to do that because man is a free agent. So you got to learn how to submit to God's direct direction, surrender to God's will for your life, and learn how to listen to God. Learn how to pay attention to God and stop making arrangements uh, for God, thinking you're going you gonna to do something special because it's what you need. No, God is going to destroy the city. It's time for you to turn around. God is going to destroy sin and sinners. It's time for you to turn around. Look at verse 23. Through 26, the sun was risen up upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained down so upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back. From behind him and she became a pillar of salt I had to call this one the assault this is when God word assaulted the disobedience of Lot's wife something behind her she didn't want to let go of she had been instructed 
escape to the mountain, don't look behind you. Escape to the mountain, escape for your life, don't look back. That's, that's pretty plain to me. That, that's, pretty, that's pretty clear to me that, 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 that there was something she was supposed to adhere to. But she decided, I don't know if it was a big home she left. I don't know if it was friends she used to play bridge with. I don't know what was at home. I don't know what was in the community. I don't know what was in the neighborhood. But something in her past, something behind her, made her turn into a pillar of salt. That's bad when you question what God going to do with you. God didn't burn her with brimstone and with fire, but he turned her into a pillar of salt. Or, because it was the salt in the salt sea area, she literally became a part of what her surroundings were. She literally became a part of that dry climate. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? That God gives you instructions but you got to follow them. If you, you and I do not follow his instructions, we will dry up. Whole lot of dry Christians. Whole lot of dead folk. Walking around, singing, praying, preaching, pastoring. Whole lot of dry folk. Because we are disobedient. God said don't. For some reason, that's what we want to do. You know your children, you learn children, you learn children, you learn children. You learn how to use what mom and daddy says, psychology. You learn how to, if you tell this one to don't do that, he gonna go do it. She gonna go make sure she do it. If you tell this one to do it, they gonna make sure they don't do it. And so you have to make sure you know how your children work. Well, God don't use reverse psychology. God just make it plain as it is. And it's up to you and I to avoid the assault by letting ourselves walk in his pathway. Walk according to his will. Walk as he has designed it. Stop trying to make your own way. Stop trying to think that you can make your way without God. I can make it without God. You can't make it without God. I can't make it without God. There, if you God's child, you can't. I need him day by day. I need him to lead me, guide me, and direct me. Order my steps in your word, dear God. I need to wake up with you on my mind. I don't want to turn dry. I don't want to turn brittle. I don't want to be one of those who look who live in a rearview mirror. I want the Lord to keep my mind, keep my thoughts, keep my heart, keep my eyes focused on you. <laughs> Sometimes we like old Peter, you know, we get to walking on the water, thinking we all that, and we get a little trouble around us. Instead of looking at Jesus, as long as he was looking at Jesus, he was walking fine. But oh, when he took his eyes off Jesus, he starts sinking. That's how we do. God done told us what to do. God done inspired us by his holy word. How are we supposed to make it in this life? But if you get too high-minded and take your eyes off the prize, take your eyes off the star post in glory, you ought to be focused and not worry what's behind you. Ain't nothing back there. Listen, you pray to get out of it. You pray, Lord, if you just take this away from me. If you remove this, God. Just, if you just get this out of, you pr don't look back. Go forward. For our own work and forward, Christian soldiers. As though unto war. Marching. You got, you got your marching orders. And everybody who's a child of God got to continue to move Forward. No, no, no. A stagnant Christian is, 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 is an oxymoron. Christians are moving. And they're always advancing. They're not going backwards. They are moving onward. 
Amen. It, it, fire and brimstone, sulfur, it burned from heaven. This, this is akin to God destroying uh, the earth by water the first time with Noah. And then look at verse, look at verse 27, 28, and 29. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt. I call this awe-inspiring. A-W-E is on your screen. Awe-inspiring. I, I tell you what, Abraham got up and he did what his wife did. He looked back into Sodom and Gomorrah, but he didn't turn into a pillar of salt. Because he was in the safe zone. <laughs> he was in the designated place that the angels afforded him. The angels allowed him to escape the fire in brimstone, in Zoar, that was to receive the fire in brimstone. So when he got to the place of safety, he looked back. When he looked back, he didn't look back lovingly as though he was missing something, but he looked back thankful for God saving his life. He looked back in, an, in, the, in, the, in the mindset of look at the wondrous works of what God has done. God remembers. Oh, that's what the Bible says. God remembered. When he saw the smoke, when he saw the furnace, it was all consuming. And the Bible says, God remembered. Now, it didn't say God remembered Lot. But God remembered Abraham. That's key. That's key. The, key. the key there is because Lot's escape was predicated on Abraham's covenant, upon Abraham's relationship, upon Abraham's agreement with God. He, 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 he remembered the covenant. I'm, somebody about to shout in here. He remembered the covenant. With Abraham, in this text, Abraham is like Christ. And that's the good thing about it. Lot didn't live holy enough. Lot did not even uh, help to even turn his wife around. Lot was getting ready to mess up. But Lot was not spared because of Lot. Even though Lot saved the, saved the angels or brought the angels into his home and and Lot fed them and clothed them and, 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 and comforted them, rather. Even though he did all that, that didn't mean nothing. God remembered Abraham. And that's the good news about you and I. I don't have to worry about having a relationship with God because of Dunham. I don't have a relationship with God because of my daddy. I don't have a relationship with God because of the Friendship Church. But it is because of Christ Jesus. Thank God when God looks at me, when God looks at you, when God thinks about you, when God considers you and your well-being, considers you. Isn't that amazing? That ought to be awe-inspiring. That ought to make you look at the glorious love of God in Christ Jesus and love Christ simply because him taking your place. Think about Christ. Spreading 
your, his love to a wretch like you and I. Think about that. Unworthy, but God remembers Christ. That's good news to me. I'm grateful to God. I'm not standing on my own, but I'm standing on Christ. I'm not, I'm not living on my own, but I'm living in Christ. Yes, Amen. I thank God that if you are saved, you've got Christ. You can thank for that. If you are not saved, I'm telling you tonight, get out. If you are not saved, I'm telling you, get out before it's too late. Yes. If you know anybody who's still unsaved, Get out. The time is now. God is on his way back. And he's going to destroy sin and sinners. So those who love sin, get out. Get out while the blood is running warm in your veins. Because once we lay you down, once them, 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 them pallbearers bring your body in, it's too late. Once your eyelids close, it's too late. Sinners, get out. Born again believers, if you are entangled in sin, get out. I'm telling you right now, repent. Repent. Acknowledge that you messed up. Tell the Lord, God is so loving. He loves you so much that he wants to hear you say, Father, forgive me. And he's so merciful. In fact, he got new mercies every day. They, 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 Thank God that he has new mercies for our new mess ups. So if I was you, I just would get out of that sin. Get out of it before it destroys the relationship with you and God. Yeah, you can go to heaven, but you don't need to go to heaven raggedy and in a destroyed life. Your, your relationship is broken. You need to repent. Get out of it while you're in your right mind. They got some stuff out there now to take you out your mind. They got some stuff out there right now that takes you out of your own way of thinking. And then even a hog pen won't turn you around. I'm here to tell you, get out while you can. Get out. Get out. Do yourself a favor. Do your family a favor. Do your children a favor. Do your mother and father a favor. Get out. Get out. Tell the, tell the Lord today is the first day of my life. I'm going on and I'm going on today. Well, God bless you and may God keep you. Let us pray. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your message. Thank you for your lesson. We pray that you will bless your people. Lay your hands upon us. And strengthen us. Use us as we go out to our various communities. We pray that you will speak for us and speak through us, guide us every step of the way. That we might win some lost sinner, that they will see that Jesus is the light of the world. And they will see that he is their way out of darkness. And then they will want to get out of that dark life. They'll want to be set free from sin's power. We do thank you, Father. We give you glory. We give you the honor. Have thine way. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, amen, and amen. Well, God bless you tonight. Thank you for your, your presence. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for all of your prayers. We pray we'll see you on tomorrow night at the SOS uh, prayer line. We do have a home going tomorrow. That'll be by Sister Shirley uh, Nelson. Thank you. Shirley Nelson also known as Tina Hunter. So we want, want you to come out tomorrow and see that at 1230. It'll be on uh, virtual, if the Lord says the same. We want you to take part, Zoom and on Facebook. But be a, be a blessing to this family, praying with Sister uh, uh, Shirley Nelson children and all of her sisters and brother. Pray, pray for them. Pray their strength. Sister Sarita Allen, pray for that family. That's a part of this family. We pray that you will uh, stay connected with the church family. All minds are clear. Thank you and amen. 
We'll see you on tomorrow if the Lord says the same. Go with God and go in peace. We love you. Good night. Good night. Sister Thank you.